Okay, here I'm going to show you how to uh, adjust the look of the measurement that you see on the screen by adjusting the graph parameters as well as smoothing it. So the first thing I'm going to actually show you how to do is to smooth it. So here you can see in the measurement that at low frequencies it already looks relatively smooth, but at high frequencies it looks pretty hashy and, and is hard to read. And the reason for that is that the bins become closer together um, given the scale. It's a logarithmic scale. And so what we want to do is go up to graph and we want to pick some smoothing. Now you'll hear different people argue which smoothing you should use, but I actually would say it doesn't matter all that much other than you probably want to stay away from the really um, overly smooth settings like one octave or one half, doc one half octave so that you can at least see what's really going on. So 1.6, one 1.12, one those are all good numbers. 1.24th and 1.48th will still look pretty hashy. So let's go ahead and look at that. So here you can see it's easier to read, still has a lot of stuff in it. For a speaker measurement, a lot of this is stuff you wouldn't hear, so I wouldn't worry about it. So I'm going to go ahead and do 1.6. Here you can see it kind of gives you a better sense of the general shape. Now to change the scaling, and here I actually already have it set up at a good scale, but let's go ahead and see what happens with different scales. So here we have the frequency, which is what you see on the bottom here. So here you can see the scale goes currently from 5 hertz to 30 kilohertz. The speaker itself really is measuring out a little below 20 hertz and up to actually only about, I think it's about 17 kilohertz. So what we're going to do is I'm going to change this scale because the speaker doesn't go so low to 10. And up here, 23 kilohertz is probably fine, so 23,000 hertz. And then for a scale, let's go ahead and make it really crazy. So let's go ahead and make it minus 100 and plus 100. And so here you see it looks really flat. And you can see why you wouldn't want to do this. It, it really isn't showing you what's going on. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to go back to the limits. Now, because the measurement is already up around uh, 70 to 80 decibels, I'm going to go ahead and make this 110. And then what you want is something that's more like a 50 decibel scale. And so to do that, what you can do is set the bottom to 60. Um, okay, so actually that didn't look very good. And so here you can see, not only are we seeing a lot of stuff, but the scale is too close to the bottom. So here's the problem. And I wasn't really thinking when I put this number in, but it's a good point to make. The range where it averages is right kind of in here on 70 decibels. And so what we have is a 10 decibel range between the average of the response and the bottom of the graph, but we actually have a 40 decibel range above that. So that doesn't make sense. So you actually would want to split the difference. Now there's, you can actually do this pretty easily just by adjusting it like this. I'll turn up the mic calibration. But you can see that actually it's kind of showing again the garbage in the response a little bit more aggressively than is needed. So I said do a 50 decibel scale Maybe what we really want is to change this then to 100. And probably here, what we would want is something like 30. That gives us a 70 decibel scale. And now we can see it's in the middle and it actually looks relatively good um, and it's easy to read. And the reason why this is nice is that each one of these uh, groupings here is 10 decibels. And so for an in-room response, you, you typically expect a tilt in the response like you see in this one. And you would want the little peaks and dips to fall within a couple of decibels of the kind of the zero mark. So if we were to just apply a line like this, for example, and look in the middle where the response is relatively flat, we see that this is at 70 and this dip is around 65, we'll say. Um, and so that's a five decibel dip. And then up here, 76, so it's about a six decibel dip. So in the area where it's sort of at its worst, we're seeing a plus or minus five decibel range. And then over the rest of it, it's really only like two decibels. Uh, and then here, it's about four decibels. So we're seeing again that the response kind of stays within a, a neat window other than this little bit of garbage here. And so um, this is kind of a good scale to use and it, it makes it easy to see what's going on. If you enjoy content like this, hit like, subscribe, and then join the conversation on avnirvana.com.